Hello and welcome to a, another episode or a new episode or something different. Uh, we thing. don't know yet. This it's is a thing. Rotten Rambling. That's what this is. Rotten Ramblings. There you go. Uh, I'm Matt. I'm Brandy. I'm Tom. You pointed at me first. I did, motherfucker. So say your name. I'm Tommy. And I'm Grim. Oh, pointing at people has become such a complicated thing. You shouldn't point at people. It's rude. Point, point, Don't point, point, you point, point, point at me. I'm going to bite that finger point, off. Point, 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 point. You're just a complicated person. I am a complicated person. I am an enigma wrapped up in a mystery. Uh, but yeah, uh, have you guys missed us? I, I know we missed. Uh, we We've do, missed us. Did we do a podcast like this last weekend? I can't <laughs> we... We did yeah, lots we and one lots one of podcasts all throughout October. And guys, it's going to be spaced out a little so bit. So it's only been like five or six days since there was a podcast. Yep. I remember that. I remember that. Ta-da. So we will go back so to So what's doing, been happening? We'll go back to doing weekly news. So this news will go all the way back to... Uh, Sunday night, last week, which would have been... Well, we still had a podcast air on Monday morning. Sunday morning. Monday morning. Monday was the 31st. Oh, okay. So then that means it goes to Monday night. Halloween and then night. Monday and night, we were out at City of Chaos. We were. We were in City of Chaos uh, for Halloween. Yes. Fun show. We had fun. Fun was had by all. Uh, you guys got anything to say about City of Chaos on Halloween? Tommy worked City of Chaos on Halloween. We, and uh, he did an amazing job. He it was did. a lot of fun. We all worked and even had the Hellbillies come out and, and play support, with us. It was yes. awesome having them out there. Uh, yeah, I had like <laughs> four or five of them down there in the tunnel with me going bananas. 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 Uh, it, was, it was a hell of a show. Uh, can't wait to see what is going on with them going forward. Uh, a lot of opportunities out there. Um, always such a great show put on by uh, Tony and, and Shane and Haynes and Christy doing all she does. Like That place has got a ton of potential and a ton of opportunities. So I am quite interested in the future. I can't wait to see where yeah. that leads us. I got to work in the clown room zone with Gemini, Smiley, Lurch, oh, Ecto, and, and Andy. Andy, yes, and it was fun. That and, was so much fun. And Grim only broke a few rules in the clown room. Well, I mean, who's <laughs> judging? Just Matt, that's all right. <laughs> you were also in the Hall of Souls, but you actually got me. I was not expecting As you to be in there. I liked being in there, but with the strobe light, I was feeling very nauseous. Yeah. Yeah. I feel that. I feel so, that. yeah. Cool night. Awesome Halloween. Thanks all the hellbillies for coming out and partying with us. Uh, we want to thank everybody that's been with us this whole Halloween season. We are currently heading to Screenville. Yes, uh, I've been to Knoxville. To check out Biggs. But, uh, so let's let's roll back. Uh, of course, Tuesday, Wednesday, Sunday. Thursday, we worked. Uh, Brandy was sick. I was. I was sick. Sick it as a dog. And me and, and Grim worked, and, and Tommy sort of sat up there and watched us work. Yes. <laughs> and Des was up there some. Yeah, Thursday. Des. We, we helped Des with an English project. That was it was a fun World as hell. War I project. Oh, history. 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 Yes. Which is kind of like, it's like I suck at English. So was probably, it English history? Is it well, she had to write, so I just throw that into English category because she had to write stuff <laughs> down. And it's funny me helping somebody out at the subject that I am quite literally the fucking worst at. But uh, it, it was fun. I, I like doing that. History is uh, cool. History is bullshit. <laughs> history sucks. I disagree. But, uh, so, yeah, and then on Thursday, Friday, on Friday night, we went to Malice. Malice, yes, in, up in uh, Lewisburg, Lewisburg, Tennessee. And uh, they put on a fucking hell of a show. What a great show. Did. It was uh, amazing. The kick-ass haunt, dude. Wish I, I could have been there. We had so much fun. I wish fun. you could have been there, too. And 
though, we were able to link up with the uh, the guy who runs the place and he invited us back out at any time. Uh, we're going to be doing some commercials with them. Uh, really fucking phenomenal people. Like, love the shit out of all of those people. Yeah, it was it was great. Getting to see OC Spikes and uh, Chuckles, Chuckles the Clown. in their yes. native habitat. It's always a pleasure. It was awesome. Uh, does, does Chuckles chuckle a lot? He gave me, he did give me a piece of candy called a chuckle, and he said so that way uh, he can, I could say I had chuckles in me at, at, uh, at you got a little bit of chuckles in there? Yeah. And uh, I think Creek Creek tried to steal his wiener. Wiener, yeah, his wiener on a stick. <laughs> but it was such a phenomenal night. It was, with, it was great. And I had to talk to and Big think, Robbie out there, uh, and just like, dude, guys yeah i know you probably will not get a chance to check them out this year that tonight is the only night and i probably will not release this until tomorrow but get out there next season and don't forget that they have december 2nd and december 3rd a that toy drive a toy drive and uh the way it works is the ticket is free you just bring a toy of equal value you know a 20 dollar toy out there and all the everything they make that night goes back uh to the charity and yes. it goes to kids for christmas and all that stuff which and is awesome i do not care for christmas but i do enjoy charity and, and helping kids out and all that stuff i think that's fucking awesome and you like toys so <laughs> i like toys i like toys <laughs> Are we going to be able to drive the toys? Is that what a toy drive is? No. Yes, it's where you drive. You like get behind works. the toys and you whip them and you're like, go toys, go. <laughs> Damn you. Now, I do know that uh, if Tennessee is a little far out of your range, that um, Nightmare at 3008 does a toy drive uh, the first weekend of December, I believe, yes. as well. And, um, of course, we are. Actually, I could be wrong about that. They might be doing their toy drive weekend this weekend. And we will, of course, probably be at Hellbilly Hollow for all of December doing. Uh, well, we don't know yet. Christmassy if, stuff. If we have the ability to get up to Malice again, we will be going there because that was a hell of a show, and I would love to support their charity. Uh, we would love to go out there, but you know how fucking Boss Miller is. Like, yeah. You know, Boss He's like, Miller, he loves to crack that whip. Don't Boss we? Miller says work. You know, we fucking work. You know, because he's 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 up there in age and. Is that Tim or David? Yes, that's Chris. Chris. Chris Miller. <laughs> <laughs> Chris but, Yeah, guys, uh, any other news that you can think of? The Tommy news. released a video. Tommy of, released of a video. Jason. Yeah, of what? Jason. <laughs> released, released videos all the time. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying. Everybody should keep a lookout. Tommy yeah, you also, should. Go watch my stuff. Tommy, all the way you also through. did some other stuff, didn't you, uh, for a uh, different company? Say that again? You did some other stuff for a different company as well? Oh, the show stopping championship wrestling? Yeah, I made them a little promo video for a wrestling match that's coming up next week. And that's uh, BB and Raw Raw from out there at Hellbilly Hollow yeah. and a couple of the other Hellbillies that work with that company. So, And remember, guys, I, I know like anybody that hears this podcast, all you know, three of you, um, that if, if you want a commercial, if you want us to do something for you, uh, just reach out to us. We love doing that stuff. Uh, the weirder, the better. Uh, the more <laughs> obscure, the better. Uh, but we're here for it. We do audio commercials as well as video commercials. And uh, we can pretty much do whatever you want us to, even if we've never done it before. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. And it'll be chaos the way we do everything. I'm sure. Yes. Now, I am super looking forward to Screamville tonight with Biggs. I really hope that it does not get rained out. We are currently driving in the rain on the way there. But I'm super excited. I can't I mean, wait to see what they yes, have to yesterday. show us. We have already said. <laughs> we have not said the whole yesterday thing. You already said you will probably release this tomorrow. You already said we were on our way to scream. Oh, that's weird. I said I'd release it tomorrow, so every time I release it, it's a lie. Because technically, the day that I release it on, I'll say tomorrow on that day, and they'll be confused. 
Whatever. I don't mean to confuse you, audience. Yes, you, know, you do. We, we here at Rotten try to confuse ourselves not to always. Confuse apparently, anyone. we try to be as straightforward, as sh straight as an arrow, with everybody, with all of our information. Straight all, edge. Blah blah, oh. blah 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 blah. <laughs> so anyway, I'm super looking forward to Screamville. Super looking and forward. And as far as next weekend goes, uh, we will be headed to. Uh, Miller's Thrillers. We'll be headed. <laughs> Miller's Thrillers on Friday night and Netherworld on Saturday night. So those should also be hella good and times. Do, and a haunt we always really enjoy. Yeah. Um, so yeah, does anybody else have anything else they want to add to our newsy part of this show? Wiener. New, 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 new news. Not, not wiener. No nope. wiener. It sounds but just, just like, like the way Gabby, way Gabby said, said it on the little uh, bop it, bop it <laughs> machine. Wiener! <laughs> that was awesome. Uh, so yeah, uh, if anybody doesn't have anything else, we will take a short kind of your shoulder break and we'll be right back with you. Uh, anybody else have anything else to say? Ah! I don't. Or wait, maybe. Too bad. Why'd you drag me out to a cornfield this time? Well, have you ever heard the story of Virgil and Sarah Branson? No. Who are they? Well, Virgil and Sarah got married, bought a ranch, had six kids, lost one of them, and then Sarah went crazy. How so? Well, she, see, she ended up killing all the other kids and said the corn made her do it. Virgil said when he found her, she was dancing around their bodies singing, You Are My Sunshine. Oh, whoa. That does sound crazy, but it still doesn't explain why we're out here. This is the field where it all happened. Hey, you hear that? You guys hear that? Oh, no. Please don't take my sunshine away. Screamville is an amazing haunted attraction in Knoxville, Tennessee, right off Tyndall Lane. New this year, the Midway of Malice. Horrifying carnival games to prepare you for your journey into the corn. Open September 30th and every Friday and Saturday in October. They'll also be open November 4th and 5th, the 5th being their blackout day. October 23rd, come out and trick or treat the trail. Join us October 15th for special guest Hacks from Hacks Horror Show. Or the weekend before Halloween to meet Blake Best and the Tennessee Ghost Seekers. That's right, Screamble presents Cursed Acres, the 2022 Screamble Hawk. <laughs> All right, guys, we are back. Uh, you may have noticed in the, uh, the first part that we have a lot of like a rumble going on. We added that for ambience uh, to the episode. Matt was farting the whole time. <laughs> uh, Non-stop. God damn it. Uh, <coughs> so yeah, like I mentioned earlier, me and Tommy got into a conversation uh, about a week ago about slashers, and I would like to discuss slashers and the concept of what a slasher is. So, First thing I want to do is go around and everybody tell me your concept of what a slasher is, and we will start with Tommy. Uh, basically, someone who slashes, who uses a blade. Um, typically referring to like movies, 
slasher films. Uh, are we able to name some of these slasher films? Yeah, yet? yeah like Friday the 13th, Halloween with Michael Myers, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, I don't like this one. Freddy Krueger. Yeah. All right. Uh, Randy, what's your contact? Uh, well, slasher... I think there's two different ways to think of slasher. Slasher refers to basically a knife-wielding maniac, someone who slashes. Uh, but also a slasher film is a movie about a knife-wielding maniac or someone who slashes. Yep. Yep. What about you, Grimble? What's your concept of the terminology of slasher? I once stabbed a bounce house. <laughs> That's not true. That okay. is true. Someone who slashes I'm, I'm glad rubber we've things had this or tires uh, as a group. Uh, but what's your concept of slasher? Brandy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my concept of slasher, uh, of course, is also is, Brandy. Yes. <laughs> also Brandy. Yes. There is the definitive idea of a person that slashes because it is ER and it means a person that slashes which could literally mean a bouncy house technically speaking or a tire or a tire <laughs> um, but to me a slasher in a slasher film is almost a part of an edict of like the lineage like there are rules to being able to become a slasher and uh, for me the, the movie that I always reference when discussing this particular point is um, the rise and fall of Leslie Ver Vernon behind the mask because of the fact that in that movie he lays out such a perfect ex like description of how to be a slasher yes um, it's a great movie so that's where we come into like a little bit of like a strange, murky area. Uh, I remember there used to be a comic book about a little girl who met up with this Jason style slasher who wasn't a bad guy. Uh, and they started going around and killing slashers. Uh, and to me, that didn't just mean, you know, a knife wielding maniac. It was a set of rules that determined that they were and like could be eternal that there is something supernatural involved with it uh and of course like again anybody can jump in at any given time on anything i talk about so you feel that they have to be they have to have something supernatural with them like something supernatural that happened to them yes or? i like in leslie vernon he talks about picking the right group of people, having the backstory just right, uh, killing them in a very specific order into, to cause a chain reaction, and then because of that backstory and the thing that happened, then the town, like, catches you in their zeitgeist and can keep you eternally alive, and because of that, you are now a slasher. Well, okay, so I agree with your concept there, and I love the Leslie Vernon movie and the way he breaks it down. I, I like that idea of it, but I also think that's how the term slasher has evolved. Um, when it was first being used as a term, uh, it was more of a, a media buzzword, something to be afraid of, not necessarily that supernatural idea for film style, um, but also the uh, the movie Psycho is kind of considered to be the father of slasher films. And here is my thing about Psycho. I know that Psycho doesn't have a quote-unquote supernatural element, but in a way it does. It's beyond natural. In Psycho, his mother has been dead for eons, and he's going around parading as her, killing people. To me, that is the equation. Like, that is that extra thing that they've got that make them a slasher, that make them beyond just a serial killer right. or a mass murderer. Well, okay, like so let's take it uh, <laughs> another step. So we talked about Freddy uh, being a slasher. But he was first coined as the slasher, first given that name 
before he was a supernatural yes. creature. Which he is, was the Springwood slasher yes. in the newspaper articles before he was dead. Yes. And I think in a case of giving someone the name, i.e. the T-Town slasher, that it uh, is a, it's an action word. There's, that just proves that, you think I'm supernatural. Yes. They're saying that they themselves slash, yeah. which that works as a monochrome on a name, but to be a slasher, to me, Freddy wasn't actually a slasher until after he died, and then it stuck into the, the town's yeah. mind, and it became this huge and wrapping story with different rules and regulations to what he could or couldn't do. Well, I also think that may have even been another instance of it, you know, ripping something from the headlines. Um, there was a real life slasher at one point. Well, I mean, I'm sure it's been used in newspapers many times. And uh, But Carl Eugene Watts, uh, whose nickname was Coral, uh, was an American serial killer dubbed the Sunday Morning Slasher. And he is suspected of being the most prolific serial killer in United States history. But notice how they spoke of him. They did not call him a slasher. They called him a serial killer. They gave slasher a part of his name. So it's almost like it's a title, not a description of what you are. The description of what he was was serial killer. His title, on the other hand, was slasher. So, to me, the description, i.e. serial killer, not the actual title siller, serial or, uh, slasher. So, he can't be considered a serial killer and a slasher, or a slasher serial killer? You can be considered a slasher serial killer, but you cannot be considered a slasher. Like, you unless, have to kill people. Like, unless something supernatural happens. Unless something beyond normalcy happens. Like, for instance, you take any of the serial killers um, of our era, and no matter what, they're not slashers. That Because it's such a toss-off terminology to real life. If you called, like, I don't know, BTK a slasher, yeah. it would almost be playing down what he did. Right. You want to associate a stronger word to it, so you say serial killer. Therefore, it's almost like you're being more more truthful about the unpleasantries of his business. So so you don't think, let's say, Ghostface is a slasher? I do not think Ghostface is a slasher. I don't think Ghostface is a slasher for a very big reason. Who is Ghostface? He's two people that were killing people with blades. Okay, but if we're going to just go off of one fucking movie, then a lot of slashers I've got to change the rules for. I make that call across the board. Any movie involved with that lineage is a part of the slasher's lineage. Therefore, the guy from Scream is actually five fucking people. Yeah. Very so very all good. five of those fucking people are Scream, or are all five of those people serial killers that donned an idea? That would be like saying... Jigsaw is a slasher. Jigsaw is not a fucking slasher. No. I wouldn't think he would be. He's I mean, just a human that does fucked up shit. There's no extra thing to it. But Jigsaw himself has slashed people. Yeah. So if you look at Chucky, Henry Lee as a serial killer to me was not a slasher. Right. But once he got transferred into the Chucky doll, then there was that See, extra... Henry Lee? Yeah. Henry Lee. Charles. Charles Lee. Charles Lee, yes. Charles Lee Ray. Charles, yeah. Yeah, the real serial killer he's based off, they okay. based off of is Henry Char Lee. Or, um, no, it was Charles Lee Ray. Charles Lee Ray. But he is, that's not his name in Child's Play. They okay. gave him a different name. It was Charles Lee Ray. Yeah. Yeah, that's his name in Child's Play. That's not the name of his killer that he's based off of at all. I have no uh, idea. I think he's based off of Henry Lee Lucas. I could be wrong about that. Brandy is looking it up currently. Um, but when he became Chucky, that made him a slasher. Who's he based off of? Uh, well, I disagree. 
I think a slasher could be a slasher, and it doesn't have to have a supernatural element. If he's using a blade to kill someone, especially if it's multiple people that he's murdering with a bladed object. But you would call someone who killed multiple people with a blade a slasher. Charles Lee Ray was inspired by three famous killers, Charles Manson, Lee Harvey Oswald, and James Earl Ray. James Earl Ray. That's the fucking guy's name. Well, he's the one who assassinated uh, Martin Luther King. Nah. And Lee Harvey Oswald, you know, assassinated JFK. So, but none of those were really, I wouldn't consider them slashers. No, they were not slashers. (laughs) But again, this is the conversation of two definitive meanings, technically three definitive meanings of slasher. You're talking about slasher as a title, and I'm talking about slasher as a concept. Of course you can call anybody that does anything at all with a blade and hurts anybody at all with a blade a slasher. That is not in question. But I don't think that in turn turns them into the concept of a slasher. I guess I see your point there. So, we've talked about, you know, a slasher as someone who kills or slashes with a blade. Does it matter what kind of blade? Like, do you consider Leatherface a slasher? We, we talked about that as well because we talk about how all of these killers don't just kill exactly. by slashing. None of them. Not a single one of them does. Each one of them are inventive in the way that they kill people, all the way down to the fact that even fucking Leatherface has killed someone by sticking them on a fucking hook. That's not a slash, that's a stab. Um, I don't, that didn't actually kill her at first. I mean, I'm Well, sure. not the first movie, but again, if you're going across the lineage, you have to go into he, every movie in that list. He mostly uses his chainsaw, which I guess is about a, a thousand different blades. Yeah, but and not then, in the end. He also uses a... He, like, punched something and fucking tore through this other guy. Like, he didn't just kill with the chainsaw. Well, he would also use the, um, uh, the tenderizing hammer. Yes, yeah, in the first movie, he he kills the guy with the tenderizer hammer. Well, it might have, it might have been more of a blacksmith's hammer, but either or. Well, they talk about it. I always thought that in that particular case, they were talking about the hammer that they used to kill the cattle because the guy in the car references it like I don't use that pneumatic thing yeah. I like to use a hammer and then he has the hammer I always thought that that was like a reference to hey we told you that that when we slaughter animals for eating we use this hammer to kill them and then the first kill is him killing the guy with the hammer when he pops out of the door Yeah, one of the names for this hammer I believe was called a dole hammer oh, some of them it looked like a sledge, sort of, or it was weighted at least, and it had a little spike, a little doll spike that would crack right into the skull and kill him. Hell yeah, that's way out of ass. It so is. Pennywise from It is not a slasher, slasher right? No, I, I do consider Pennywise a slasher because of the fact that he has a backstory. He was a clown in the circus. Some shit happened. There was a fire. All this other stuff. I do not consider him a slasher. And then the concept of Pennywise was like taken over by uh, like a sort of a I, dark I entity. One. Didn't I eat one? Yes, you ate one. Eat another one. Uh, <coughs> and it wore... Matt's trying to tell Grim to eat a slasher. Yes. So. Yeah, I'm going to eat a slasher. It, come here. It no! <laughs> Stop biting me! It tastes so good! <laughs> but because Pennywise was still a memory of his action, even if he was coupled with a a dark entity or the fucking turtle or whatever. But he never used a, a knife, a blade. I mean... That's not true. It was constructs that he was basically creating, wasn't it? Yeah, but... Okay... Everybody uses that. Like, even Freddy uses that. Like, dream constructs. But he's not really known as someone that's going to kill you with a blade. He might eat you. But see, again, your arm you're off talking or... about the difference between the concept of a slasher and the title of so what that slasher So, it is actually often considered a slasher movie, even though it, like, the idea of slashing isn't necessarily the way... Pennywise typically 
uh, does things. But the slasher genre is a horror mainstay, and so is the author, Stephen King. Um, and therefore, he kind of still fits the dichotomy, especially with the supernatural element, like yes. you re- referenced. Do you think Jack from The Shining... I do not think Jack from The Shining is a slasher. If Jack from The Shining went forward, if there was another part to The Shining past when he froze in the in the ice and snow, even if it wasn't supernatural, at that point, he could be a slasher. Because now he's got motivation to kill beyond just a disgruntled problem with this person or that person. Okay, what about Pinhead? Pinhead is another gray area. Pinhead definitely slashes. And it's definitely of, supernatural. And it's definitely supernatural, but technically does not kill. But he's he's listed as having the it? highest kill count. Yeah, I think he does kill. But he commands the chains of hell to come in and rip your rip you apart. Yeah, but, yeah, but it, the only kills. stuff that that he has actively put into play is creating cenobites. Which, do you say that they're killed at that point? Or are they changed into monsters? See, I don't know if the I want to consider... The itself is actually Leviathan, which is why you can construct it into the Leviathan spike. So the box itself is actually run by the leader of hell. That's why in hell, it's that giant rotating spiral, which is a different connective thing of the... Uh, Lament construct. Does Hannibal Lecter count as a slasher? Hannibal Lecter is a serial killer. Hannibal Lecter has nothing supernatural beyond the fact that he's really good at what he does. Well, I think uh, Pinhead actually killed a few. Like, there was this one woman he killed that he forced her to become pregnant and it killed her. Okay, in the books, that would that would count. I haven't read a lot of the books, but I think that would ca- that definitely counts. Like, any kind of on the books, accepted as canon information, would count toward whether, like their kill count, whether or not they are slashers, yada, 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 yada. So in that case, I would have to consider him a slasher. Not only did he kill, like, magicians, people, and even demons, he killed, like, a lot. But, like, okay, so, like, Pumpkinhead. Pumpkinhead himself is not a slasher. <laughs> I think he is. I think Pumpkinhead is an nails entity. are steel. I agree. But Pumpkinhead is an entity. Whoever summoned him into them, that was that would be the same way a slasher comes into existence. That Pumpkinhead was just an accepted name for every one of the machinations of this deity. When it was actually Lance Hendrickson in the first movie as Pumpkinhead. Well, the very first Pumpkinhead was probably the actual demon itself. Right, and then he became like, then he accepted it and became Pumpkinhead later on. So technically, Lance Hendrickson is the slasher, and Pumpkinhead until the next. Until the, next, the next one, yes. And every single time they call Pumpkinhead in, if you look at it as if that was the movie, if he went on to be Pumpkinhead, if the next person went on to be Pumpkinhead, that would be a supernatural dawning where something happened. Now they want to kill people with a supernatural force, and they are driven by hatred, fear, or or desire. Right. <coughs> revenge. Or revenge. Now some people consider Candyman a slasher. I, but I still Candy, think it's a hook, is though. A slasher. But he still slashes. Like again, this is the concept of slasher versus the action of slashing. I agree that slashing does make you a slasher, but you do not have to slash to become the concept of a slasher, because that's looking at it as a verb and looking at it as a description. Then Pinhead definitely still works. Yeah. But, uh, okay, so like what... I, I, don't, I don't agree. I, so, I think <laughs> Pinhead is a slasher. You don't think it or Pinhead are a slasher. One who slashes is a slasher. I, I do that have that is issue. true. <laughs> what you're saying is true. But you do realize in the English language there are multiple definitions for the exact same word. I just can't see me allowing in my in my brain of horror movies. But do you films. think do you think, you know, the Hellraiser movies fit in the uh 
fit in the genre of slasher films. I mean, maybe, but... Then, then it would still work. I guess, but I always just see more, like, like... I, I mean, if I allow Freddy Krueger in there, in the dream world, I guess I have to allow Hellraiser. But when you say that... Uh, but, like, Freddy Krueger definitely fits his hand is blades. He uh, definitely true. slashes. But again, true. again that's, true. That's, that's, that's not still, his only kill. That's, that's not his only same. method but of he's, killing. But he's basically only killing in the dream world, which is... which is. Uh, but not necessarily. Not no. in all the movies. He's killed out of the dream world in part two when they pulled him out. Exactly. He's killed out of the dream world. I mean, they're definitely and, dying in real life. Yeah. Most yes. of the time by slashing. Yes. But, uh, again, like we roll back around to that idea... Yes, he is a slasher because he slashes, but he's also a slasher in the concept of slashers. Like, again, I don't think someone has to slash to be in the genre of slashers. But I do think that if you're going to call someone a slasher in action, then if they're not slashing, that doesn't make any sense. But, like, there's definitely no question that Jason is a slasher. No question. There's uh, Michael Myers. He still fits the concept. It technically didn't become, what, supernatural? I guess he kept coming back. Yes. But that's the thing about slashers. Part six was the curse. However long forward it goes, like I said about The Shining, if The Shining had a part two, then backwards you would have to accept the concept that he is a slasher because... He came back alive. Yeah, because he came back alive. So then you'd have to go back to part one and go, in this movie, you know what? He is a slasher. Why isn't there a The Shining part two? Because it wouldn't make any sense. (laughs) Was Doctor Sleep a prequel? But like, couldn't couldn't you always have somebody else become a caretaker? Technically a part two, but it doesn't have it doesn't have his character in it. It doesn't have Jack in it. Jack would be the only thing that could be considered a slasher. Because the shining not necessarily, and everything else not necessarily. are just a concept of activity. Because but, originally the shining was like something that was left over from soldiers that passed away in the hotel. Or, exactly. So if 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 new people come to be the caretakers of this place and are infected by whatever, then and it would be like the pumpkin head thing. Exactly. That they themselves, each new person, would be a slasher. But it doesn't work for Ghostface because yeah, no, Ghostface is just a costume, not a supernatural thing Entity. that is happening yes. to. Him. That's what I think. That's my two cents on it. Well, I don't think Pennywise is a slasher, and I do think Ghostface is definitely a slasher. Ghostface is so not a fucking slasher. You still can't even tell me who Ghostface is. I don't remember the characters' names. But, but that's my point, though. You remember see, I'm not, I'm slashers. I am not a very big Scream fan. But you remember I, see, the okay. slasher's name because it's one fucking person. The first movie, when it first came out, I appreciated it and enjoyed yes. for what it was. I agree. Um, but the idea of Ghostface as a bad guy bothers me in general because it's, not it's the same really just... No matter what, in each rendition, it's basically a punk ass kid that's just a shithead. <laughs> or a punk like, ass adult. A shithead. Yes, and I just I that does not inspire fear. That inspires anger and well, it's a annoyance. It's a different annoyance, kind of exactly. fear because irritation. Yes. As a society, we pride ourselves on being strong in the idea of reality in what we can look at and go. This could happen, and yes. I would prevail. Like, we always see ourselves as the victor of every situation when it comes to reality. But outside of reality, in the place where this thing doesn't normally happen or this strange circumstance, we could not even imagine our activity on it, no matter how brazen we want to be. We still wouldn't know that we would definitely overcome this unstoppable force because we don't know that force we have no basis well i have a huge issue with seeing ghost face as an unstoppable force agree i don't think that counts i mean like for like right off the bat you could have stopped at least one 
single ghost face with some hair gel Whereas and a fucking comb. Pennywise is, fucking is still fe- awe and fear. And fear and- yes, yes. True. I like Matthew Lillard, though. I do like Matthew but, Lillard, but in but that role, also Skeet a little Ridge. bitch. <laughs> fuck Skeet Ulrich. I'm sorry. I do not care for Skeet Ulrich. Oh. Oh. But yeah, that means that Scream, the first Scream, has two slashers in it. Yes. Technically. To your technicality. Yes. They both based on the cost, slash. Based on the idea of someone who but slashes. in your own technicality, then, you know, fuck a cat in a fucking movie about a family <laughs> that scratches somebody <laughs> is a slasher. Yep. And then that makes that Puss, Puss in Boots, baby. That Puss darn He's got a sword, a too. He's a slasher, and those are slasher films. He slashes. It's Zorro. <laughs> Zorro is a fucking slasher. TDC, that damn cat. Zorro is a slasher, by that definition. So again, that's that's where my idea kind of wanes, and it's like, eh, I don't, that can't work for me. They are slashing, but they are not slashers. The, the girl in the TikTok video that you were talking oh, about the other day. Oh, I told her about the video you showed me, the swing, swing, swing video. Technically, swing, by that swing. definition, oh she's a slasher, even if she only slashes. Did, did Brandy see it? No. No, oh. he just told me about it. She cut the crap out of herself. She's lucky she didn't stab her own eyeball out. Yeah, real fucking lucky. That shit was fucking horrid. At first, I was like, why is there a sensitive warning on here? And then I, I thought it was just going to be another uh, um, insane, she insane clown off. posse fucking ring, ring, ring. But, um, and yeah. it is because of things like that and people like that. That's that why we can't have nice things on TikTok. <laughs> on TikTok, yes. Uh, but no, if someone's going to be a slasher, they need to be a a serial killer and two slashing with with some sort of bladed or hooked weapon. But what about chainsaw? Chainsaw, chainsaw is bladed. Yeah, it's a blade. It's, it's, like a, it's just a different type of a blade. So you're okay with Candyman being a slasher? Yeah. Okay. But again, you wouldn't consider somebody like I don't know. What about Chucky? Like he has Chucky people, but that's not his go-to. I mean, he used a knife a lot. And then yeah, he, he also, in part two, in court, he got his hand cut off or, or, or ripped off. Yeah, put a cutter, yeah. Ooh, is Ash a slasher? Slash? Ash. Ash. Oh, I thought you said slash, like from Guns N' Roses. <laughs> slash can't be a fucking slasher because he's not a man. He slashes that guitar, man. Yeah. Snake Ash is not a slasher from Evil Dead, Army yes, of Darkness. Armies of Darkness. I'm trying to think of other like. Uh, well, if you think other. about if you think about armies of well any of them really, gotta, there is there are elements of the supernatural in those movies, and do those movies still qualify as part of the slasher film genre? And if they do, then why wouldn't he count as so a slasher? Bad, well, what are other fucking prolific murderers in movies? Like, are the killer clowns from outer space? No. No. Count. No, definitely um, not. They're just aliens. Yeah. Really creepy it's aliens. Kind of completely different <laughs> genre, even though it gets looped into a. Was it Pennywise world. a creepy alien? No, Pennywise was an ancient evil. entity. The three lights going back up into that. Yeah, thing. the dead lights. That's what the entity was. Was actually the dead lights. Yeah. And there's like the whole turtle that the Earth is on its back or something. I don't know. It's got really weird. I don't know. Um, what are other prolific? Uh, the cartoon movie Monster House is the house a slasher? No. <laughs> no, but people actually went in there and killed him. It just didn't show it, but it happened. Yeah, but in the end, Monster House, if looked as a perspective piece, you could say that all of that stuff didn't happen and those were just imaginative kids. Because of the fact that you saw it from their perspective, the whole movie, then you have to imagine that them as becoming aware of the world around them, that they would see these ghastly things happen. But because it was never recorded or talked about in reality, i.e. these people go in and they go missing, except for between the kids. So you imagine yourself when you were a kid and there was like a murder house on your block and 
you know, you had yeah. a big story about this crazy guy, and oh, I saw my my friend went in there, and never came back out, blah 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 blah. If it's not in the paper, then it didn't fucking happen. Well, I got a question for you: Is Voldemort from the Harry Potter series a slasher? He's supernatural, and he slashes with his wand. You know, slashing out. Yeah, but the <laughs> wand. He's slashing the out wand those magical spells. Actually, <laughs> stab anybody. Yeah, but the magic that comes from it does. True. So it is. <laughs> it's like an energy blade slashing people. Yeah. Okay, He's so is Voldemort a slasher? Uh, he wait, has... does that mean uh, Siths are slashers with their energy wands that slash people? That, that's a good one. What about a lightsaber? Does that count as a slasher? Yes. Uh, could could Lord uh, Vader yes. be a, a slasher? And is that does that supernatural element uh, still? Yeah. Is well, that I mean, a thing? if you chart it back and forth, both Voldemort and Darth Vader had been killed and by a group back. of people and wanted vengeance and was, like, re-brought back for vengeance. So, technically speaking... They're slashers. They're slashers. Like, even under my terminology and your terminology, those two movies are still slasher movies. Mm, yeah. I never thought and about it And technically, if you look at it like that, does that make both the Siths and the Jedi's slashers? Well, again, they have to be good <laughs> guys or bad guys. Yeah. But I think in the case of Jedi and Sith, there's it's all there's, about politics. Yeah, The Sith think they're just as righteous and right as the Jedi's do. But depending on which side of that you're on... One is the bad guy, one is the good guy. Because in the end, yeah. a war is just a bunch of people that want their rules more than somebody else's rules. Are werewolves slashers? Depends on the werewolf. What about zombies? Zombies, I, I don't think zombies could ever be considered slashers because they're a group of things. Just like you said, werewolves cannot be slashers, but individual, individual werewolves might can be, be slashers. Okay. I can see that. Individual vampires? Well, that's a fucking really hard one. Because with vampires, it's more of a, like... I know with werewolf, it's more of a, like, I turned you. But werewolf can become werewolf because it reached out for that desire. Yeah. Uh, I don't that know if that's the same thing for vampires. That's, that's a fucking hard call for me. But if you go down the idea of just slashing to be a slasher... That would make almost every fucking cop drama, every drama movie, all the way down to fucking uh, Fatal Attraction, <laughs> a slasher film. And that just doesn't fit. Yeah, that doesn't oh. work for me. Because they killed with slashing. Right. Cape Fear, slasher movie. Like, I, I, I see your point, but I can disagree on some of it. Is Edward Scissorhands a slasher? He never killed anybody. Well, he killed the um, grandpa character, but... I think that that's still not enough kills to qualify you. But he meant he was just misunderstood. <laughs> he wasn't technically a bad guy. He's slashing them bushes up, though. He's slashing them bushes. I mean, that's a living thing. <laughs> oh hey, by the way, <laughs> by the way <laughs> don't dismiss your life. We're in Georgia trees. now. <laughs> don't dismiss a lot of trees. We're in Georgia. This is a multi state podcast. Yeah, we have now gone through. We went through Alabama and now we're in hey, Georgia and we're almost to Tennessee. Break, isn't it? It's a, yeah, this God is, uh, damn. We went, we went for a while. I think this has been a good conversation. I think this has been a good conversation. Does, uh, anybody I've enjoyed else it. have anything else to throw into the in on this? Aside from Grim slashing the castle. I would like to hear from our listeners on what they think. <laughs> yeah, I just guys, don't know I how to tell you uh, where to get in touch here's with. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put a post on Facebook. Uh, and asking what you think a slasher is and who you think a slasher is. And we'd love to see your comments and see yes. your take on this if you got to listen. Whether or not you disagree with this or agree with this or have a completely different understanding of it, I would like to see it all. I agree. I disagree. No, no I'm joking. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So let us know. Maybe there's a third side we've never heard of. Yeah. Right. Or never thought of. Never even thought of. Never thought of and like, Was there maybe. any girl slashers in movies? Yes. If I spit on your grave, would she be a slasher? That's such a fucking mm. hard call. 
Mama, I mean, Mama Voorhees. It doesn't, doesn't really give the supernatural look. side Mama of things. Mama Voorhees is not a slasher. I disagree. Because they slashed people to kill them? She killed the hell out of them, was hearing her son in her head. Kill him, Bobby. Kill him. Yeah, but technically that could have been him just in the woods. No, he well, she's hearing it in her brain. Yeah, but I'm saying, remember at the end of part one, he was fucking still alive? Yeah, technically. So he could have just literally been right behind a fucking tree screaming at her. We don't know. <laughs> just because we didn't see the whole scene, that doesn't So she's like wait. fucking with his mom the whole yeah, time. Like, yeah. Just kill her, Bobby. Yes, kill her. Do it, do it. That's how we learned. That would be a cool backstory. Yeah, like he's <laughs> literally there like, kill him, pop. Yeah, fucking I ain't got to do shit. I'm, I mean, <laughs> minus <laughs> the supernatural element, you could almost say the chick from High Tension was a slasher. Uh, I, again, with the chick I from High Tension. I said almost tension, and minus the supernatural. It equated to the idea of you were seeing someone else's perception of her. Yes, yes. Because it was the idea of masculine versus feminine because you see this killer and just doing this horrific shit and you assume it's masculine because she's doing these very manly Well, it also things. has a lot to do with her own uh, splits. Yes. So. Yeah. Sleepaway Camp. Sleepaway oh, Camp yes. is like, it does, it, because it's different people. Like, the first yeah. one, like, there's a, there's an element to it, but she wouldn't be a slasher. Like, uh, Angela wouldn't be a slasher. The sister from Ginger Snaps, would she be a slasher? Yeah, I think that... And is that... You mean the werewolf? Stop. werewolf. Yeah, she could stop. Yes, she really I could. believe that, that she, under the circumstances of slasher, would be a slasher and a werewolf. Because, again, it was... Sure, it's another she was good infected movie. I by Snaps. wolves, but eventually you start to see that it was her desire to be the wolf. Yeah. That still, in, in, like, caused it to be a thing. Very interesting discussion. Fucking Jennifer's body, as unfortunate yeah. as fuck as it is. I know. That girl is a fucking slasher. Diablo Cody, like, eh, super duper, but... Well, I'm very curious to hear what our listeners actually have to say about Definitely. it. Definitely. As am I. Are you all going to agree with us? Might inspire gonna, a whole new conversation. Are you going to be stupid and agree with Tommy? Whatever you want to do. I, I, would, I would agree with Tommy. Matt's brain <laughs> is not all there. He doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. I never know. But you, but you got to admit, this was a great conversation. I think it sucked. <laughs> <laughs> There's no one listening at this point. There was no one listening at the to first point. <laughs> <laughs> Well, all right. I think uh, we have wrapped up this conversation for now. And until we get to see what your thoughts are, maybe we'll have a whole new conversation and call you out for your thoughts. If you listen to this podcast, comment on Matt's profile picture and say, you suck. Yeah. (laughs) If you you stuck around this bar, just tell him he sucks. Tell me I suck. Uh, Also, guys, just as a, uh, a possible thought of what I'd love to do in the future, um, I would love to every week pick a different haunt that we're affiliated with and do a contest with all of our listeners. And the contest will be this. We will send you a few merch things and some signed pictures if you go on to the different haunts Facebook and Google Maps and write them a five-star review. And we'll go and look at those reviews and we will pick a winner out of the people that actually did both the Facebook and the Google review. Uh, yes. Because I think that would really help out a lot of people getting a little bit more exposure. But something we're working on, I just had the thought a couple of days ago, and I've been trying to think it out. But, yeah, so keep an eye out for that, and I'd love to see as many people interact as possible. Also, yes. On any of the posts we put up, uh, even this podcast post, uh, I think we'll start doing a podcast post along with the podcast, so that way you can answer all questions. Yes, I like if that. If you want to. Um, is that, let us know what your haunt is. Let us know yes. what you haunt. Let us know what you call your home haunt. Like, we love seeing it. The more reminders we get, the more likely we are to remember it, because we are very, very stupid. <laughs> But you guys are not, and we love the (laughs) shit out of you. And uh, like we always say when we part ways, stay rotten, guys. Stay rotten. Stay rotten. Stay rotten.
And now here's Grim Lens with a special message about Hellbilly Hollow in Vincent, Alabama. Hello, Rotten listeners. This is Grim with a very special message. This year, Hellbilly Hollow is giving us not one, but two Hell Nights back to back. This is a show you will not see during our regular season, so you do not want to miss this. So mark your calendars for the 16th and 17th of September. And warning, this is an 18 and older R-rated show, so no minors allowed, and bring your IDs with you. This will also be full contact, so I wouldn't wear your Sunday's best. It's going to be wild, and I cannot wait to see you there. Wink, wink. Wink.